Top 10 of 2023. First, like, subscribe, and comment your top 10 down below. I would love to read it. I had to watch Poor Things and Saltburn. Watched them. Finally made it. Here's my top 10. Let me get this freaking table out of frame. There we go. So number 10, When Evil Lurks. It is a good, creepy movie. Saw it by myself, ideally. The best way to watch any horror film. And a lot of disturbing scenes. Very memorable. Uh, Argentinian film. I think people should watch this movie, make up their own mind. I can understand people hate it because it's very unconventional. And it doesn't make any sense, really. But I, by the end of the movie, I was like, damn, that was weird and creepy and has a great title, great poster, and a fantastic scene with a goat. The best scene with a goat since Black Phillip from The Witch. This guy should fight Black Phillip. Two goats fighting. Number nine, Covenant. The Covenant. Jake Gyllenhaal can do no wrong. Great Iraq War film. No one's talking about it. Made no top tens. I'm like, this is a fantastic movie that deserved to come out towards the end of the year so it gets remembered by the Oscars. Yeah, but they only have a memory as far back as September, so it won't be. But it was a really good movie. See this movie. See The Covenant. Damn worth your time. Um, number eight, Spider-Verse. Into the Spider-Verse. Great animation. A lot of movies are going to copy this movie with this animation. I know it. But very entertaining throughout. A little bit overlong. But I enjoyed it, and I like the whole idea that he's the anomaly in their, you know, canon universe. But great stuff. Funny. I mean, no flaws, really enjoyed it and there's a part two coming out hopefully there's civil war amongst the animators ends number seven dungeons and dragons the little film that could so actually it's a big uh, mid-budget blockbuster who knows who cares i saw it at first and i was like eh, it was okay it was okay it wasn't bad it wasn't good you know i was like eh, it was whatever and then i watched it again and i was like you know what this is a very enjoyable little film and i could watch this over and over again because it's, it's a very easy watch it's not a long movie. It's just a good time. It's a feels like an early 2000s good time movie. It's a nice little fantasy film. And I just didn't hate a frame of it. The only critique is the villain. But this is one of the most rewatchable movies on this list. It really is. So I would like to see a sequel. I really did. And Chris Pine. He kills it. He kills it. And that dude who walks in a straight line. Funny Sophia Lillis. Super cute face. Big fan. Number uh, six. Thanksgiving. Eli Roth has made mostly bad movies. But there's two I like. Knock Knock is incredibly weird and very entertaining with Keanu Reeves, Lorenzo Izzo, and Ana de Amas. And then this is super entertaining. I understand a lot of people think it's cliche. It is cliche. It's as well executed. One of the most fun I had in the theaters. Saw this by myself and saw it with the fam. I enjoyed it both times. It's a good mystery. I got the villain wrong. Great Halloween costume. I very much enjoyed this movie from beginning to end. I could easily watch this again. So, yeah. And Thanksgiving 2 is coming. Hyped. Eli Roth, you found your thing right there, you know. Make more, make Scream, the next Scream movie. Because Scream at this point, you know, it, it could use just one good movie. Because Scream 6, Scream 7, eh. Scream 5 was okay. Uh, number 5, The Iron Claw. Zac Efron got so built. He needs to play the ultimate warrior. They should have told him to stop. I'm like, if you took a pin and you poked him, he would explode. He is just like, like, like that. This dude cannot walk. It looks like the Incredible Hulk. Paint them green. Why do we need CGI? Just tell Zac Efron, get us some roids, and he could beat a Hulk in any movie. Lou Ferrigno. The new Lou Ferrigno. Anyways, Iron Claw. Great title card, by the way. It was black and white, and it's, uh, you know, what the hell's his name? Fritz. He's stopping some dude. Love that beginning. But great movie. They missed Chris Von Eric for some reason. Great acting. Um, very depressing real-life story, and I'm a wrestling fanatic. A big wrestling nerd here, so I know about the Von Erichs. I love seeing it. I want to see a Ric Flair movie made by this guy called Flair. That's the next movie that needs to come out. Or ma make a Bret Hart versus uh, Shawn Michaels. Like, little Montreal screw job movie. Call it The Hitman versus The Heartbreak Kid. Make that movie. But The Iron Claw, great stuff. Loved it. I want to see nothing more wrestling biopics from this director. Absolutely. Just impactful movie. Super depressing. Yeah. Number four, Oppenheimer. Saw this movie two days in a row. Six hours of explosion and dialogue and Christopher Nolan. He needs to win his best director, finally. I think he got nominated for Dunkirk. I'm like, I don't know how this guy hasn't won best director. And best picture, it has high potential for that. It really does. You know, it's partnered with Barbie and it had a cultural impact. This is a movie that not just has made out to everybody's top 10, but it literally had a cultural impact. It was, you know, 
dually placed with Barbie, and it was great counter programming, and they self marketed off each other, and I thought that was fascinating. Or dual marketed. It was a fascinating thing to have this, you know, black and pink type thing going on. Big fan, epic movie, great sound design, fantastic score. I love Nolan's film scores. It's the best thing about him. Um, great acting. Only critique was uh, I don't like the little dingy room that they were, you know, going after him on for so long. Like, you know, that, that was the only boring part of the movie. Very impactful ending. Perhaps they're talking about something more important. One of the best lines of the year. Number three, Evil Dead Rise. One of the most fun times I had at the theater. Saw it twice in theaters. Best opening card sequence ever. Ever. In any movie. My personal favorite, at least. That lead actor, that lady, the, the lead Deadite, super, super, super entertaining. Great performance. I wish you got, you know, nominated for performances that weren't just drama films. But very entertaining movie. Loved every character in it. Loved every actor in it. Um, had a good time with this one. Blood, guts, and gore. Crazy ending. It was just a very entertaining movie. And I could easily watch it again. I could watch it right now. It's a very easy get through. Short movie. Big fan. Number two, Poor Things. Saw this movie. One of the last, the only reasons that this came out a little late. Saw it in a theater last night and uh, super entertaining beginning to end. A little over long. I'll give it that one critique. Besides that, cinematography is so unique and weird and just fish eyes and color grading. That's so bizarre. Uh, sets and costumes are through the roof. Like it's competing with Barbie when it comes to sets. Emma Stone is brave as hell. Her and Barry Keoghan this year are just brave as hell. Barry Keoghan fucked dirt. He fucked dirt. And uh, Emma Stone was a whore. A literal whore. And she had so many sex scenes this movie. I was like, this is the bravery I want to see from actors and actresses. This movie is about a Frankenstein woman. She has her baby's brain put in her head. It's the weirdest premises ever. The only movie I haven't seen from Yorgos Lanthimos. It sounds like a weird guy. Is Dogtooth. But all his movies are good. He's killing it. He's on a killing spree. Lobster was weird. Um, the favorite was weird. He is just a weird guy. He's like a modern Lynch with his movies. And Mark Ruffalo killed it. Very funny, ridiculous performance. Hope he gets nominated for it. I thoroughly enjoyed every line that came out of his mouth. He just continuously said the craziest insults of all time. And he yelled, God, for a very long time. Longest I've ever heard it yelled in any movie. So, yeah, poor things. A lot of great title cards in this movie, too. Willem Dafoe's crazy. Love the ending, too. But, yeah. A little over long. It's the only, the only critique. But I was thoroughly entertained and laughing throughout this movie. Lines of dialogue I've never heard before and probably never hear again. Things you'll never imagine coming out of people's mouths. Number nine. Oh, no. Number nine. What am I saying? Number one. Godzilla minus one. It's going to be a lot of lists. Godzilla plus one. Godzilla minus one. And it's a lot of people's number ones because it's just that damn good. It is... Short, sweet, to the point. Well acted. The best Godzilla movie of all time. It has... it When that beat drops, when that score drops, it drops at such precise moments. Him and Ginza and him at the end when the plan's being executed, it's so powerful. And I remember just in theaters, like, I can't believe I'm watching this right now. Because I knew nothing about this movie. I didn't even know a Godzilla movie was coming out. I found it, like, days before it came out. It was, like, four days. And I was like, there's a Godzilla movie out? What the hell? Uh, saw Shin Godzilla, also a great movie. But this movie had a great story. It was very layered. Leaps and bounds over anything America has done with Godzilla. I mean, you had a story about post-World War II guilt. You had a story about PTSD. You had a story about, you know, heroism and feeling like a failure and courage and lost. And just a very weird scenario with him and this girl and this kid that you never see. They had this quasi-family of non-related, non-relationships going on in this house. I'm like, it's very weird. Very weird, but I'm like, it's unique, it's different, it's interesting. Great characters with anime facial expressions. That captain's like, oh, that that uh, scientist guy looked like a Japanese Einstein. The boy. <laughs> it's good stuff. Great characters. Very dramatic personal arc with the lead character that tied in with Godzilla in a way that was unique and different. And just impactful stuff. It's a movie that very much left an impression. Phenomenal battle. Super just high quality monster kaiju film that was making the human characters interesting for the first time ever. In any of these movies, the first time I actually cared. And by the time it was over, I was like, 
damn. So, what's your list? Comment down below. I would love to read it. Like and subscribe. That's my top 20, top 20, top 10 of 2023. Quick, When Evil Lurks, Covenant, Spider-Verse, Dungeons and Dragons, Thanksgiving, Iron Claw, Oppenheimer, Evil Dead Rise, Poor Things, and Godzilla Minus One. That's my list. And uh, I would love to read yours. Please subscribe. Had a great time this year, or last year. And uh, hopefully 2024 won up because 2023 wasn't the best year for movies. It wasn't the best year. But it did have some great gems in it.